Hi, my name is Joel, and I'm the worship leader here at Solid Rock Apostolic Church. If you're a first time guest, thank you for coming out today. If you've been here before, thank you for coming back. I'd like to share a couple ways that you can get involved this week with our church. Today after church is a fried chicken fundraiser. Today you can get, just for adults, it's $8. For kids, it's $5. This is gonna go to benefit our, our first annual Solid Rock and Boom. Please come out there and support us so we can have a great, great time this year. This Thursday at seven is prayer meeting. Directly following that is going to be a new conference class that's gonna be taught by pastor. If you wanna be a part of it, see Sister Allison to sign up. Youth group, this Friday night, be here at the church at 6.30, bring $15 and bring a friend with you. You guys are going to Young's Dairy. If you have any questions or wanna know any details about it, talk to Brother Isaac or Sister Lindsay. The Dark County Fair is just around the corner and our pop booth is one of the biggest fundraisers that we have. We are accepting pop donations right now and we are in need of Coke, Diet Coke, Pepsi, and Mountain Dew. If you have any questions, see Sister Allison for details. Have you ever wondered how you can get involved with your church? Well, I have the answer for you. We need volunteers. We need volunteers in our media, our sound, and our video department. We need volunteers as singers, as musicians, as attendance takers. If you have the need or desire to want to be a part of your church, these are just a few of the places that you can get involved. If you have any questions or want some details about it, see Sister Allison and she'll direct you to the right person. Well, now that you know about some upcoming things here at the church, here's a couple things that you need to do. Number one, if you're a first time guest, you need to fill out our Connect card. This just gives us a little bit of information about you and lets us be able to get in contact with you. It also gives you a little bit of information about us. Number two, if you've ever wondered about service times, you've wondered, when does that church start? Or have you, what's that upcoming event? You can search in our app at either the App Store or Google Play at SRAC. It'll come up and you'll be ready to go. Thank you for coming out to Solid Rock Apostolic Church today. We appreciate you coming out here to worship with us. I'm ready to have some church. Well, now that you know, knowing's half the battle. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's all stand. I have came here today to praise the living God. I have came here today to worship the living God. I have realized that he can do anything that I ask or think. I realize how great he is today. My friend, if you don't realize how great he is today, he's here for you. My God can do anything. Say that to yourself. My God can do anything. Because he owns it all. He died on the cross for you and my sins. Or yours and my sins, sorry. But he's great and greatly to be praised. Can we lift our hands and welcome him into this place? We thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to have your way in this service today, God. We thank you and we praise you, God. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to fill somebody with the Holy Ghost today, God. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We praise you, God. Anoint pastors little clay today, God. Lord, we thank you and we praise you in the name of Jesus. Worship with them as they sing. Let's put our hands together today.
Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands all over this house right now. How many know that we serve a God that loves us? He is here for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is just for me. A love like a hurricane and I am a tree.
chains are undone. Take me there. Take me there. Take me there. Take me there. Oh, cause I want to know. Heaven touches earth and I'm caught in between I want to know what it feels like For the glory of the Lord to fall, fall on me So take me there Take me there It's take Take me to the place where your angels never cease to cry Holy
you stand up beside somebody right now? Why don't you lay your hand upon their shoulder? Hallelujah. Create a spirit of unity in this house right now. Hallelujah. Jesus, we lift you up and we're here to magnify and praise you. We thank you for what you're doing today. We thank you for our Lord. I thank you for what you're doing in my brother. I thank you for what you're doing in my sister. Father, we thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing. We thank you right now, oh God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's keep praising the Lord right now. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, I don't believe God's done right now. Amen. God's not done. Come on. There's still one, two, three that need to come to this altar right now. God has been talking to you through this service, and you need to come. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, we love you today. God, we love you today, Jesus. God, we thank you for your spirit. God, we thank you for your presence. Come on, come on, come on. Let's pray right now. Come on. Let's seek after the Lord right now. Jesus, Jesus, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Oh, Jesus, we thank you, God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, Jesus. God, we call in your name, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, right now, God. God, we plead your blood right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, there's a, there's a couple more that need to come right now. Come on, come on, just step out. Don't be afraid. Amen, this is a place where the hungry are fed. Amen, come up and get fed by the Lord. Hallelujah, come on, don't be afraid to step out. Today's your chance. Today's your time. Reach out and grab the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
he loves us so oh how he loves us and how he loves us so and oh how he loves us so oh how he loves us and how he loves us so and he loves us oh how he loves us oh how he loves us oh how he loves oh he loves us he loves us and oh how he loves us oh how he loves us and oh how he loves just one more time he loves us Let's lift our hands all over this house and just love him right now. Love him back. He first loved us. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, let's raise our hands and thank him for what he's done here today. Amen. We know he's not finished. Praise God. Just raise your hand and thank him right now. Oh, God, thank you for healing. Lord, thank you for delivering God. Thank you, Lord, for setting us free. God, thank you for your presence. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen, Sister Misty. It is good to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. We love you. Amen. This whole church loves you. Praise God. Good to see you. God is doing awesome things right now. Amen. And I'm not getting uh, spooky or ghost, you know. But... um. There's things that are happening right now as we worship the Lord. There's hearts that are being brought back together. There's people that have been battling illnesses that are feeling better. Amen. There's, there's just the presence of God coming down. Amen. And um, we're going to go over our announcements and then uh, I'll turn it back and then put whatever pastor wants to do. But we have been visited by the Lord this morning. Amen. Praise God. We have been visited by the presence of God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We don't want to forget some of the, the uh, announcements. We have our Dark County Fair pop booth, and um, that will be coming up. And so we need all kinds of drinks, and uh, we ask that you see Sister Allison if you have any questions. Um, also, there will be a dessert auction July the 30th after the service. Amen. And we'll have some fun with that um, midwinter youth retreat unfinished that'll be august the 4th 25 dollars registration and that it will be at brother reinhardt's church in chillicothe and that'll be a good time for the youth uh, ruby sisters praise fest amen will be july the 31st and um, they're just going to praise God for all he's done in their lives. Amen. They're going to share testimonies and uh, then at the end have a taco bar. Amen. Nothing could go wrong with that. Praise God. Amen. That's neat. Amen. Also, we'll have a church garage sale and that will be um, on August the 5th. Amen. Clean out your closets. Clean out your attics. Amen. And see Sister Allison O'Shell. And uh, we have a location in mind on US 127. Um, so 
get with Sister O'Shell. She'll help you with that. Amen. And then just a quick announcement that I will have snipers on my roof this coming Friday. When the youth um, come to Young's Dairy again, um, just being fair. Amen. And um, so we want them to have a good time. Um, my, uh, I will have a couple friends with me and they will be hollow points. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Um, eight rolls of perfectly unused toilet paper at my house right now. Amen. Praise God. So, uh, you'll be youth choir practice on Sunday, July the 16th, after service. And then we need Brother Marklin to come. Hey, man, you know what he's getting ready to do. <clears throat> A long time ago, someone came up with an amazing invention. On their farm, a chicken had died. Their flower thresher had broken. And as they were dragging the chicken inside, they threw it in a pot. And it just so happened to be breaded. That pot had oil in it. And fried chicken was born. And we just so happened to be selling that fried chicken <laughs> after service. So if you love fried chicken, you, we don't really need to do anything. Fried chicken sells itself. But more importantly, if you love outreach, um, Solid Rock and Boom is coming up, and we're uh, trying to fund that. This is, has the potential to be an extremely large event. We're going to have fireworks and a car show and all kinds of wonderful things. Um, and it's, it's not just about <clears throat> having a good time. It's about reaching out to our community. If your community doesn't know who you are and why you're there and how you can help them, then we're here for naught. So... <clears throat> Yes, we are selling chicken. Yes, it is delicious. Yes, I am a fat man peddling food to you. <laughs> but I just want you to know that it's going to go for a good cause. You can get a fried chicken dinner with green beans and corn and a roll and a soda for $8. It is amazing. It's delicious. And please support your church. This is, a, this is an easy way for you to get fed and for our church to uh, raise the funds it needs for Solid Rock and Boom. Thank you. All right, uh, at this time, we're going to take up our Sunday evening tithes and offerings. Or Sunday afternoon. Sorry. Brother Clack, if you please pray. I can do anything Oh yes I can do all things Cause it's you who gives me strength And nothing is impossible Through you blind eyes are open And strongholds are broken I am living by faith
I can do all things Cause it's you who gives me strength Nothing is impossible God. You may be seated. May be seated. Last Sunday, we had a, uh, a, a baptism, uh, of course, in the name of Jesus Christ. And God was so powerful last Sunday and, and a, um, as He is today. And in our Thursday Bible study, Thursday home Bible study, um, by the way, if you, if you are looking to, uh, if you're new and want to learn more about the Lord, and we encourage you to come on out, it's a relaxed setting and, and a... Uh, uh, you know, we got some food and some some drinks and and just some just some Jesus, and a, uh, so we last this past Thursday we had a great Bible study talked about repentance and and a, uh, some of those important things that we understand, and the the person we baptized last Sunday, Brother Ty Rodriguez, and he 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 I'm not caught off guard too much I really am not, uh, but he gave his testimony uh, in that Bible study and. I got listening to it, and I'm thinking about halfway while he was talking, I thought, you don't know it yet, but you're going to be telling that to our church Sunday. And uh, it's, it's a powerful testimony, and it encouraged me. And so I, I asked him, I said, man, you care before I, before I preach, come on up here and, and, a, uh, and give your testimony. So uh, he ain't getting out of this. So <laughs> at this time, Brother Ty, come on up, Brother Ty. I want you to give your testimony to our, to our church. Praise God. Come on up. Just baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost just last Sunday. Could you give him another hand today? First of all, I don't think you asked me. You told me. <laughs> just saying. Sorry. So Thursday, I go into class and I'm happy there's nachos and, or there's chips and salsa. <clears throat> Next thing I know, God's sitting there tapping me on the shoulder saying, Ty, you need to tell them your story. <clears throat> I waited till the end, told them my story, and the pastor sat there and told me I needed to share my story. So I go home and Pray and why? Why me? And how? He says, How you're going to do it, I'm going to do it with you. He says, Why? We'll get it to it later. So, about seven or eight years ago, I'm sick, dealing with some medical issues. And I remember I was living in Salina and I would come up every other weekend with the girls and I would stay at my mom's house and one night I put the girls to bed. I went back out and I'm sitting there and I'm talking to my mom and probably on Facebook or whatever. I go back in, I lay back down, and I seen black spirits just attacking me. I had no idea what it was, didn't care what it was, really. All I knew was I wasn't going to go out and tell my mom because I was going to hear something I didn't want to hear. <clears throat> so that following two weeks later, I'm 
back at my mom's house and I put the girls to bed and I go back out and I go lay down. Not only do I see the black spirits, but they're talking to me and they're telling me, Ty, it's time to go. Come with us. From that day forward, I've always had suicidal thoughts. It was like I was addicted to suicide and death. Well, my dad passed away and it got worse. I wanted to know where did he go? What happened to him? I didn't believe in God. I didn't know if there was a heaven or hell. So my suicidal thoughts got worse. I couldn't drive down the road without thinking about death. I couldn't go to bed without thinking about death. It was just haunting me. Everybody that loved me, I pushed them away because I didn't want them to be there when I died. Well, I remember the first Thursday I walk in, and I'm sitting there, and I'm all tense up. I'm thinking to myself, I don't want to hear what this guy's got to say. It's the same blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> Saturday night rolls around. I decide to jump on my bike, and I go down, and I see my cousin. And he asked me, he said, Ty, he says, what's new? And I looked at him, and I said, I'm going to church. And his mouth kind of dropped. And he was like, why? And I said, why? I said, I've been thinking about killing myself. I want to know if there's heaven or hell. I don't want nobody to sit here and tell me about it. I want to find out firsthand for myself. So it was getting dark out. And I asked him, I said, well, I, I said, you know, I don't know if I got my riding glasses for a nighttime or not. And he did everything in his power not to get me to leave. And I told him, I said, well, I'm just going to go down to the gas station, see if they have some clear riding glasses, and I'll be back. That was probably 10 minutes he was sitting there telling me, Ty, no, just stay here. Just stay here. Well, I ended up taking off found a pair of glasses, and I come back, and I'm there for probably about an hour. I end up telling him goodbye, you know, and I loved him and whatnot, and I got on my bike, and as I'm going down the 127, my mind just went blank. All I thought the whole entire ride back was wrecking my bike, Nobody will find me. When somebody shows up, I'll be long gone. Well, I came to about Whirlpool. And I get home, put the bike away, laying in bed. And as I'm laying there in bed, I'm thinking to myself, I got ammunition in my nightstand. My gun is in my closet. All I remember the next is waking up the next morning. I come in, had no attentions on getting baptized. And I asked Barbie, I said, Barbie, I said, can I sit with you? And she said, sure. Well, I noticed that the two seats were taken and I didn't want to, you know, make anybody feel awkward or anything. So I went and I sat back with Christy. The next thing I know, Barbie walks in. She says, oh, I thought you were sitting with me. <laughs> so I got up and I sat in the front row and they were going at it back and forth about who I'm sitting with. And I remember looking at Barbie and I said, Barbie, I said, you know, I said, I kind of feel like I'm in high school. Not that they're fighting over me, 
But it's like, I'm a bad boy. And the teacher wanted me to be in the front row. I remember getting up. I think I looked over at Barbie and I said, is it normal to feel pukey? And she said, I think it's your nerves or... Correct. I'm glad to remember. <clears throat> so I start crying and I walk out to go to the bathroom, wipe some tears off. Come back in, I sit back down. And that's about all I remember. And I remember the pastor standing up there and saying, everybody bow your heads and pray to God. Something, somebody, I have no idea who it was, literally took over my body. The next thing I know, I kind of come to as I'm standing here with Tyler, right? And I'm still kind of, you know, dazed or whatnot. And apparently, the pastor, I went through and we watched it. The pastor asked anybody, you know, there's somebody here that, there's somebody here that needs to be baptized. And unknowingly, I stepped forward to my mom and I told my mom that I'm ready. I don't remember anything that happened while I was being baptized. <clears throat> but I had one question, and my question was, is it real? God did not want to, to anybody in this world to tell me. God wanted to show me. So Monday we were going to the softball game and we're having conversation about it and my mom looked at me or my mom was driving but she kind of looked back at me and she said Ty she said you've always been a bad boy <laughs> I didn't think I was that bad to be honest with you <laughs> but you know what I was a bad boy and I'm still going to be a bad boy but for God. All right. yes. All right. All right. So Thursday. We're sitting in class, and God's pushing me to tell me my story, and I get out of class. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, God, why me? Why do you want to put me on a spot like this? I get out to the truck, and I get a message on Facebook. And the message was, I just finished reading my Bible. What did it feel like to be, or what does it feel like to be baptized and to live for the Lord? Hmm. I better think on that one. So I waited a while. <clears throat> I responded back to her and I told her, I said, I said, if you want to video chat me, you can video chat me. So she just gave me her number. So I called her. We had a conversation, and I told her, I said, it's easier to sin than it is to live for the Lord. It's cooler to sin than it is to be with the Lord. Nah, it's not. So as I was sitting there praying and talking to God, you know, and I asked him, I said, Why? 
Friday morning I wake up and I'm sitting at work and there's an older guy that works with me and literally out of nowhere we start talking about religion this has happened a couple of times and God says Ty he needs to hear your story so when I finished telling him my story, he looks at me all teary-eyed and says, I had that rope around my neck and I was ready to kick the chair out from underneath me until my ex-wife walked in. <clears throat> now the company that I work for, big company, they'll ship you in and out put you where they want you. And the conversation kind of stopped and we started talking about work again. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, out of the blue, he looks at me and he says, you know, I've been to a Catholic church. I've been to a Baptist church. But I've never felt anything at all. And I told him, I said, it's real. You're just not going to the right church. So, after that conversation, I looked at him and I told him, I said, if you go from what we talked about two months ago, which is locker talk, if you know what that is, to what we're talking about now, God put us together for a reason. I don't know what the reason is, but we're together for a reason. So my last message to everybody is, if you've ever had any doubt, if you've ever questioned anything in your life about God, let him show you. If you ever have any question about God, He'll let you feel it. And if you've never felt it, you're missing on a good thing. Praise the Lord. Let's all stand real quick. Pastor ain't going to be long. I'm not going to be long. I'm going to be quick. Jeremiah chapter number 29 today. Jeremiah chapter number 29 today. Verse number 10. For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. If you, you ever wanted to know what God thought about you, here's what He thinks about you. Saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end, that shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me. And I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me and find me. When ye shall search for me with all your heart, and I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity. And I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I cause you to be carried away captive. One more verse of Scripture. The book of Amos chapter number 6, verse 1. You don't have to turn there. I'll read it. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. 
comfortable. Comfortable. And trust in the mountain of Samaria, which are named chief to the nations to whom the house of Israel came. But woe to them that are at ease in Zion. Someone that feels comfortable in a place that you should not feel comfortable in. Today I want to preach this for a few short minutes. And I know God's already moved and worked in. I know that. So I'm not going to be long today. But I do feel like I've got a word from the Lord for our church today. On a message entitled, Who Called Hospice In? Who called hospice in today? Who called hospice in? Good to see Cody and Lisa back there. Good to see y'all. Praise God. Who called hospice in today? If you'll preach with me about 15 minutes, I promise you I won't be long today. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you, Lord, today. I thank you, God, for all that you are. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do, God. You are an amazing God. You are a very present help in the time of trouble. Jesus, I love you and I appreciate you, Lord. And I thank you for all that you are in our lives. Jesus, I want you to move today, God. Lord, I pray, God, that the response, Lord, should be equal to that which we're in crisis. Let it be that point, God, where someone feels that urge, God, to go to that next level. We love you. We praise you. We give you all praise and all things, God. Glory belongs to you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, in Jesus' name. You may be seated today. If, if I could today, just for, just for a, a, a prop, if you could hold that, brother. If I could today, if I could have Brother Joel Proxman come on up here. Brother Stephen, you can get past that. I know I cut you off there. Brother Joel Proxman, great guy. Don't you love our worship leader, Brother Joel Proxman? Brother Joel worked really hard today. I mean, he, he, he's been singing for over an hour, uh, an hour straight was, was, was singing. And, 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 and so this is church, brother. I mean, this is church. So I, I want you to feel comfortable. I want you to feel as comfortable. As you, and I don't think anything will make you feel more comfortable than an Ohio State pillow. Oh, yes. Just lean on back, brother. Don't just feel, just feel comfortable. I don't want you to feel comfortable. I don't been working real hard today. I just want to, brother Eric, as you, as you have your, you have that paper, go ahead and take that paper in your hand, brother, and your right hand and go and fan him a little bit. I mean, he's just been working real hard and fan him a little bit, brother. I'm um, here. You go. Here's a nice blanket there for you. Let's, let's, let's turn around here. It's turned around. We want to make sure that Oh, here we go. We want to make sure it's, it's nice and we looks. Oh, there we go, brother. Working hard. At, we want you to feel comfortable. It's church, right? Comfortable, comfortable. You know, I would tuck you in, but maybe you might get your wife up here to do that later. I don't know, but um, I could tell you was wanting me to, but I, I said no. Uh, just, I just want you to feel comfortable uh, because this is church. I mean, this is, I mean, you should feel comfortable in church, right? That's what they're telling us, right? Is that what they're telling us? So I, I, I want you to feel comfortable and, and, and uh, you know, uh, you, you, was, you was working, but a little, I thought I saw like a little sweat up there, but I could have been wrong. But, and Eric's helping you out with that. Just, uh, we're working together and just making feel. And, 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 and after all, this is church, and, and our world right now is trying to make our church feel more comfortable, right? It's what they're doing. You can bring your coffee and donuts in in some places, not ours, but in some places. And, and so, uh, you know, this is the house of God. And, one, you know, the only thing better than Hershey's milk chocolate kisses is the white chocolate, the hugs. Can I get a witness? If not, see me after church. Oh, it's real. It's real. So, I mean, go ahead, brother. I mean, go ahead and get you. I mean, I mean, we don't we don't eat in the house of God. But after all, I mean, I mean, I did have business and gravy on the way here, but I ate them. So here's some Hershey's. Go ahead and eat you one, brother. I mean, after all, he deserves it. I mean, comfortable. We want him to feel comfortable. And, and, and you're probably not going through anything right in your life right now, correct? Everything's good right now. It's comfortable. Just feel comfortable. And, and, and how, how'd that taste, brother? Good. You feel comfortable? I mean, you've got your, your pillow. You've got everything. And, and everyone knows that. Just trying to make him feel comfortable. I mean, after all, I mean, just trying to make him feel. Maybe not that kind of comfortable, but, you know, just want to. I knew I shouldn't have used Eric as a prop. <laughs> I mean, sugar cookie, you know, I mean, after all, I mean, you've worked hard and, and this is the house of God. After all, I mean, you've got nothing you're struggling with at all in your whole life. Go and take you by that, brothers. They're nice and, nice and soft. How, good. Excellent. Yeah. 
I can tell by your response that you're nice and comfortable and 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 again and 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 we I just want you to be comfortable. I mean the house of God and 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 you're not going through nothing in your life and what? This is the house of God, isn't it? I mean I mean I mean there you go. I mean I know I mean there's nothing better than washed grapes. Clean wa- go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. No, no, it just has. It just has. <laughs> Just comfortable in the house. Go ahead. I mean, sugar cookies, hugs, and 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 everyone everyone knows that Pepsi's better than Coke. I mean, every <laughs> due to your response, I can tell you're a believer as well. So I mean, go ahead. I mean, he, oh, he don't drink pop. Okay. Oh well, that's that's quite all right. I knew I knew that. So I got this for me, and I got you the water. <laughs> Comfortable. Oh, absolutely. Go and open it up, brother. You've worked hard enough. I mean, comfortable. You know, and, and, and just want you to feel comfortable, brother. You've been working hard up here. You're not going through anything. Here we go. I'm, I'm, a, I'm just going to leave these here. Take your liberty. Take your liberty. Take your, and, and I'm going to try to, I'm going to go preach now. Just, are you Okay. I, I'm going to do my very best. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try my best not to preach anything that would hurt his feelings. I'm going to try my best to, to be uh, socially uh, sensitive because I don't want him to feel that, 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 heaven is, or that heaven is just a figment of imagination. And, uh, and, and here, uh, here at this church, to feel uncomfortable, we don't, we don't preach, against, we don't preach uh, at, against hell or anything like that because hell's just... Something that was written about. Everyone's going to heaven here, and, and we don't want to preach about standard or preach about holiness or preach about commitment or preach about tithing or pre- because we want him to feel comfortable, right? Right? We, 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 we want him to come into church, and, and this is a, a church where, you know, if you feel like praising God and dancing, you can if that's your excitement. But if, for the most of us, we're more dignified and more, you know, elegant in, in, in speech and some of those things. And when they sing the song, we normally don't get too emotional because, you know, we don't want to mess up anything. I mean, emotional people, you know, the, the church gets real hot. You know, we don't want to do that. And, 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 and so, and so a, a, as I find in our scripture reading today, and now, there was a moment in time when the children of Israel got to a place where they felt comfortable. And the Lord had cautioned them. He told them, he says, he says I don't want you to be comfortable in Zion. I don't want you to get to a place in your life where you feel that nothing can penetrate your thoughts. Nothing can penetrate your life where... You feel just comfortable enough to be uh, in a place of the living. Comfortable enough to be in a place where you don't mess up your suit, you don't mess up your tie, and you don't sweat in church. And and, 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 and if you go two hours, uh, uh, that's too long, but, but, but somewhere in the middle of an hour and a half to hour and 45 minutes is just right. And, and, and so we're living in a day and age today where if we're not careful, we will seek more after comfortability. Versus Christianity. And the danger with that is this. My question is simple today. Who called hospice in? And, and I've, been, uh, I've been privileged to be at the bedside. Just keep on eating, brothers. Take, you know, just feel comfortable. I don't want you to, uh, to get anything messed up. I'm just going to keep preaching if that's all right with you. Is that okay with you? You just let me know, okay? And, and, and I've been in a place where they've called hospice in many times. And, and one of the dangers about calling the spirit of hospice into the church is this, is that the only time you call hospice in is when right before death they want you to feel comfortable. Right before you die, they want you to feel at ease. They want you to feel comfort. And they talk about quality of life. And, and they talk about, well, they don't want to have any more pain if you just have this in your, in your life. Or they don't want you to have any more uh, this if you just, if we just give you this, we're not going to have pain. And that you'll just pass peacefully along. And let me tell you today is this, that God's church was never meant to be made to feel comfortable. But God's church has always been a place where they have been oppressed and they have been the place where they have been attacked by the world but the Bible says that greater is he that's within us and he that's within the world 
in a day and age where they've concentrated more on taking food in the church versus having the food of God's Word in the church. You see, this day and age says, bring a donut to the house of God. But in the Bible days, they said, they said God's meat is worth more than my present heaven, than my present food. Can I tell someone this place today that the solid rock apostolic church will never be a place where we seek more after comfortability than what we do revival? Because let me tell you why. Revival's messy. Revival will cost you something. Commitment will be something that will cost you. And in a world of day and age where we're seeking after what feels good, let me crucify my flesh and say, Lord, let me give myself to you. I don't know about you, but I, if you want delivered from anything today in this room today, if you want delivered from anything, let me tell you, don't seek after comfortability because comfortability is one step away from death. Comfortability is one step away from you taking your last breath. I don't know about you, but if I was fighting for my life, I'd rather, I'd rather die swinging than die being comfortable. I'd rather die having revival then die doing nothing. I want to go. I want to go another round and say, give me my stuff back. Give me my blessing back. Give me my joy back. Give me my peace back. Give me back my mind. I'd rather worship God in church going after something than die being comfortable. I'd rather fight for my, for my children than for them to die in hell because I was too comfortable. I would rather mess up my suit and tie in the house of God than for me just to be comfortable in the house of God because I realize that lives are only changed when the church is worshiping and praising and faithing and believing and praying to God that you will never have a breakthrough until you allow God to break through you. I'd rather sweat in church than sweat in out in the world. I'd rather worship God in church and be in His presence where God could heal my mind and touch my heart than to die not even trying, die not even caring, and die not even concerned about the next generation. God sent Jeremiah to tell his people something. He said, For thus saith the Lord that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you and causing you to return to this place. And God, what God was doing is God was telling the children of Israel that, that there is about to be a visitation. And if you're not careful, you'll feel too comfortable where you are that you will miss the visitation from God. You'll feel too comfortable in this place that you'll miss your visitation to get out. You'll miss your visitation to go into a place that God has for you. And in Numbers chapter 14 verses 1 through 4, the Bible says that night upon all the people, the community raised their voices and wept aloud. All the Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron and the whole assembly said to them, if only we had died in Egypt or in this desert. Why is the Lord bringing us to a land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and and children be taken as plunder. Would it be better? Would it be better for us to go back to Egypt where we were comfortable? And they said to each other, we should choose a leader to go back to Egypt. What God was trying to do was, was this. He was trying to get them out of Egypt. But the problem was, was this. They fell in love with Egypt. They fell in love with being broken. They fell in love in a place where God never intended for them. And my encouragement for you in this place today is, is this. Don't build your home in this valley. Because God said the storm will pass. Don't feel comfortable when God is trying to raise up a warrior. He's trying to raise up a praiser. He's trying to raise up a worshiper. God says don't be comfortable in your dilemma. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Little did you know that Brother Joel might be going through the hardest storm in his life right now. But the response does not indicate what he presently is going through. You see, if Satan was fighting my home, if he was fighting my family, if he was fighting my children, and if he's fighting my church, the worst thing that I could do is look for a place of comfortability. 
The worst thing you could do is look for a place where everything is just at ease in Zion. The worst thing you could do is look for a place where there was no conflict and there was no controversy. I don't know about you in this place today, but I don't ever want to call hospice into the house of God. I never want to call in a comfortable state in God's house. Sometimes God puts you through affliction because He's trying to agitate you. He's trying to motivate you to get up back to the place of worship that God has for your life. And I'll never be a pastor that says look for comfortability. I don't know about you, but somebody needs to grab their sword. Someone needs to grab their spear. Someone needs to grab their war weapons and say, I'm not leaving without a fight. I'm not leaving without a worship. I won't give up. As I was looking at altar today, I began to think to myself, God, you are doing so many things in so many lives. But more than that, I thought to myself, there are some people that are sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired. It would be easy for you to go home and stay in bed and turn out the lights and wake up sometime tonight. But somebody said to themselves, I need to get myself to the house of the Lord where God can meet me at my time and place of need. I need to get to the place where God can make a way where there seems right now to be no way. I need to get to a place when God can open a door in the midst of the Red Sea. So with that thought today, as my promise to be short, I want you to stand. I am nowhere close to being done. I'm just closing early. So what are you going to do when everything around you says, look for a place of being comfortable? Have you called hospice into your miracle? Have you called hospice in yet to your miracle? Because anytime there was a miracle, there was never a hospice moment. I'm just going to make you feel comfortable today. We got churches. You'd be surprised. And I've, I've, I've read their books because I'm trying my best to win as many people as I can for the Lord comes back. But, but we, got, we got books and tell them, well, why don't you make them feel this way when they walk in the door? And I believe, I believe in all that stuff. But one of the things in apostolic church is this. How can you have a sound of a rushing mighty wind and not hurt people's ears? How is it that you can have fire on people's heads and not get hot? How is it you can have a whole church full of people speaking in tongues and someone not get offended? Could it just possibly be that the people on the day of Pentecost was fed up with the average norm? When God said, I want you to go to the upper room until you be undued on high, He wasn't telling them that just so they'd feel good. He never promised them a new car, a new pool, a new house, a new boat, or anything else. He just promised them. He said, stay there until you be endued on high. That the comforter was the comfort of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost was going to visit you at a time and a point and a place of need. The Holy Ghost was going to come. Let me tell you in this place today, some look for the Holy Ghost to fall on them on, on a couch or just watching the football game. But let me tell you, I know that the Holy Holy Ghost comes when there are people that are gathered together in the name of Jesus Christ that are worshiping and praying and praising the name of Jesus. A place that says, Lord, I don't care if I look silly speaking in tongues. Just pour out your spirit upon me. I don't care, Lord, what I got to do to get out of this storm. But God, let me seek you while you can be found. In closing, Simon the leper has Jesus in his house. And one version of the Bible says it best, that Simon the leper felt comfortable on his chair. So Simon the leper has Jesus in his house, 
But Simon the leper is checking out his, had his watch. <laughs> Eating grapes. Potato chips. Not realizing. I'm going to give you pastor's version. Hey, you doofus. You got leprosy. Why are you sitting down when Jesus is in your house? So one woman who's so desperate for a move of God in her life, the Bible, I mean, just read, I'm just read, I'd read. I mean, the Bible says she'll knock on the door. The Bible says she's opened the door up. Forget the greetings. Just walks in and start worshiping Jesus. The Lord blessed her. And Simon the leper never got the healing that was intended for his life. Yes, yes, yes. Never. Jesus walks in the healer. He walks out the healer. And Simon the leper still needs healing. Why? Because God will never move on you unless you're willing to move. Faith without works is dead. God has the power in His hands. But if you can't get off the couch and to get a hold of His feet and to get a hold of His horns of the altar, then God says, I'm not touching you. If you don't want me, I'm not going to force myself on you. But one woman said, get out of my way. I'm going to get my breakthrough. I'm going to get my healing. And she got it. So here is my question. Who called hospice in? Who told you it was too late? Who told you that God can't do it? Who told you that God couldn't turn your emotions around? Who told you that God couldn't give you a brand new start and use you? Who told you that you couldn't live for God? Because let me tell you, if somebody told you even one of those things, let me tell you, you need to look on the report of the Lord. God says you can make it with Him. You can go past this with Him. You can make it. Kick hospice out and let God in. And God will bless you. Every hand to be raised right now. Every single hand. Every single desperate hand that be raised right now. I want you to lift up your head. I want you to begin to call out the name of Jesus. I don't care what you're facing. You can be thinking suicide. And God is thinking, I'm going to be your Savior. You can be thinking death. And God is thinking life. You can be thinking about ending it all. And God says it's the beginning of it all. God says there's a turnaround coming. Kick this out and let God in. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, we love you. Link up to someone right now. I know we've already had an altar call. But link up to someone, arm in arm together with somebody. Find you someone right now to pray with. Find you someone to pray with. Link up with them right now. I want you to begin to pray for that person you're linked up with right now. In the name of Jesus, you got the Holy Ghost? Let the Holy Ghost come out of you. Pray for him. Pray for him with tons of fire. Pray for him with faith. God can reveal to you what they need. Pray for him right now. Come on in the name of Jesus. Loosen every chain. Loosen every shackle. Loosen every addiction. Loosen every lie. Satan, you are a liar. God will have the final say so. We're kicking hospice out and we're letting God back in. We're moving into a realm of supernatural. Satan told me I couldn't make it, but God said I'm gonna make it. That's the power. Come on, come on, pray for somebody. Pray for somebody. Pray for somebody. That's it, Cody. That's it, Alicia. Pray for 
pray, pray, pray. That's it, Brother Mitch, pray. That's it, Brother Clint, pray, pray, pray. That's it, Ty, pray. That's it, young people, pray. That's it. The devil is a liar. Your greatest days are still yet ahead of you. Don't you believe the report of the enemy? God's just getting started. You've got a breakthrough coming. Before they sing, before they sing the next song, God is speaking to several people in this room today. God has shined a light into your mind. And the war in your members has now been exposed. Satan, you are a liar. God is going to use me to the greatest of my ability. And I believe and declare the report of the Lord to be the truth in my life. God, I'm not going to seek being comfortable. I'm going to seek the Christ in my life. Who are you today? Who are you? Who are you today? Satan has been lying to you. I dare you to get out from your seat. I dare you to get out and to come down this altar raising holy hands to Jesus and recognizing that God is fixing to turn this situation around starting right now. God is going to get the glory. Come on church, raise your hands, raise your hands. Love the Lord. If that's you, get out right now. Get out right now. I feel the Holy Ghost. Get out right now. I don't care if you've already been to the altar one time. Get your prayer through the day. The nine just kept on running. The one turned back around and said, God, I praise you to get it. And now I'm going to praise you to keep it. Come on, church, help me pray, help me pray. Come on, pray with your mouth, pray with your mouth, begin to pray. Oh, yeah. Oh, today's my new day. Today's gonna be my new start in the name of Jesus. Now they're fixing to sing. But before we start praying, I want you to raise your hands and begin to pray right now. In the name of Jesus, God. Someone's leaving home. Someone's going home with the chains broken. Someone's leaving. Their chains are going to be demolished. Someone's leaving. Addictions are just getting off of me. Come on. If someone's leaving, they're going to leave new and refreshed and cleansed and made new today. I'm not leaving with no more fear. I'm not going to wake up in the middle of the night at that exact time afraid for my life. I rebuke the devil. I rebuke what he's trying to do on me. God is going to get the victory out of my life. I'm, this is the first day of my turnaround. With the Lord I can do. Sing, sing. I want you to pray. Well, it's a struggle for survival If we daily meet the foe And we're out there on the battlefield And sometimes we stand alone That's when I reach for my holy arm I pick up my shield of faith And I march on to the battlefield I pick up my sword and say All the mountains high but it's not in the battle is rough, but I'm not too weak And I won't turn back, no I won't turn back Oh, the road is hard, but it's not too long The enemy's near, but he's not too strong And I won't turn back, no I won't turn back Oh, the mountain's high, but it's not too steep The battle is rough, but I'm not
And I won't turn back I won't turn back I won't turn back Now, no, 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 no I won't turn back I won't turn back I won't turn back Oh, yes, I won't turn back I won't turn back Now, no, 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 no I won't turn back I won't turn back I won't turn back now Well, it's a struggle for survival If we daily meet the foe We're out there on the battlefield Sometimes we stand alone That's when I reach for my holy armor I pick up my shield of faith And I march on to the battlefield I pick up my sword and say The mountain's high but it's not too steep The battle is rough but I'm not too weak
Hasn't the Lord been good to us today? Hasn't the Lord been good to us today? If you've not been baptized in Jesus' name, come and see me before you leave this place today. We're going to pray. we got some food over here. If you don't have the money with you today, then just say, Pastor's got me. Go to the line and say, Pastor said, he's, he's got me, and I'll be right after you today. We want to be able to have fun eating some food, some chicken. Let's pray. Jesus, Lord, we love you today. Thank you for your spirit. God, we thank you, Lord, for all that you're going to do in the lives and hearts of people everywhere. God, we thank you, God, for every song that was sung today. Thank you, God, for Brother Ty's testimony, God. Someone, something's happening in the spirit world, God. I pray, Lord, today that you bless our food, bless our week, God, as we go from this place and we go out there, God, to the evangelistic field and we compel someone and tell someone about Jesus Christ. Help us, God. God, bring us back at your appointed time. We love you with all of our heart, Lord. You are all that. In Jesus' name we pray. Shake at least three people's hand, hug a neck. Lord bless you.